blessings to everyone, saints. Nice to see everyone. I'm telling you, got something powerful here that I'm going to be releasing on this land. Your praise will Your praise will Ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips Ever be on
Jesus, as you're joining on, <laughs> I'm going to be ministering to you on here. <laughs> it's going to be real good for your spirit and your soul. I'm going to be talking to you about the secrets about angels. A prophetic impartation for men and women on here. be powerful. opportunities God will give it to you the Lord said you snatch the mantles in your bloodline because he can trust you and you wonder the Holy Spirit saying to tell you that he giving you boldness that you don't have no insecurity because you his woman and he gonna use you to be a light in your workplace a light in your environment. And the Lord said there's a special hundredfold blessing coming to you.
those of you who are on here, listen, we go into another zone in this teaching. We go into another zone in this teaching. I'm going to be sharing some things with you that's very powerful in the realm of angels, prosperity, wealth, supernatural increase, the glory realm that attracts angels to you. But you don't want to attract demons. You don't want evil spirits to be drawn to you. You can shut them off. Uh, and you, listen, satanic attacks is a good signal. Because if the devil fighting you, that means that he know that you're on the other side. He know that you're in the other kingdom. Satanic attacks is confirmation. Warfare is the answer of your position in the spirit. Warfare is the answer to your position in the spirit. And God confirms uh, where you are, what kingdom you're in, what anointing you're in, by the demons that are drawn to fight you. Understand, the strong men demons are not moved to fight people that's drinking milk. The strong men demons are moved to fight people that's eating meat. Uh, your meat is an indication of Satan's defeat. He know what you are going to do next by the protein you're taking in. <laughs> you got under. <laughs> Daughter had me looking like Al Sharpton right there. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. I'm just joking around. I'm just joking around. <laughs> now, let me give you some secrets here, which, which is very powerful. What, <laughs> what you, <laughs> what you want to catch is, I done told you now. I done told you. <laughs> I done told you. I done told you now. I done told you. Now, what's, what's, what's funny about... <laughs> Never mind. Now... <laughs> Always have something that smell good to you, near to you. Always remember this. I, I'm going to show you something that's real powerful. Always have something near to you that smells good to you. Because angels flock to scent, fragrance, uh, cologne, things that smell good. Oh, and let me give you a secret. Foul and unclean spirits... They are used to the environment of hell, and hell smell awful. I don't know if some of y'all ever had a vision or God so graciously let you go to hell. Hell smell, it don't even smell like garbage. There, it, it, it will make you nauseous and make you throw up. There's people, well, I don't want to get too graphic to mess some of y'all up. But there's people that do reactions in hell because they got to smell that forever. Imagine that, saints. So... Evil spirits also are drawn by that same. Uh, that's why if you see somebody in depression, if you got a family member or you got somebody in depression and like they're sorrowful, they might do different stuff. They might not uh, really care about that. This is what I want you to catch. This is what I caught. The Holy Spirit said something to me. The scent that you have attracts angels. When you smell good, it attracts different angels to your life. That's why you start feeling a clarity in your mind. If you ever inhaled some type of perfume or cologne that smelled good, if you look at it, your clarity and your wisdom would be so precise at the moment. Now, saints, I know what I'm talking about because... If you understand how I flow, 
I got different secrets. I'm just letting you in on my secrets here. I'm just letting you in on my secrets. What you smell is spiritual. Let me give you a secret. The Bible said that when Sodom and Gomorrah was sinning against God, look at uh, when, when Sodom and Gomorrah was sinning against God, the Bible began to tell us The Bible began to tell us that God, he smelt sin. And when he smelt sin, he came down and he began to judge the land. What you want to catch is that God can smell your position. He can smell whether or not you're holy, you're righteous, you're in agreement. He can smell disagreement. God's nostrils is his discernment. Think about it. Ain't that something? Huh? Isn't that something? God can smell where your heart is. God knows where you stand spiritually by what he smells. I'm trying to find something that I saw. I'm trying to find something that I saw. Now, I'm about to shock you with this. I'm about to shock because God can smell your seed. I'm about to shock you. Huh? God can smell... You're sowing. And that's when he released wealth. Because it smells so good to God that he began to release covenant wealth and prosperity to you. God smell your seed. That's why I said God loveth a cheerful giver. Because he'll smell your seed. Wow. Genesis 18. God can smell your obedience. So God knows. He knows where you stand, whether you're ready for wealth whether you're ready for increase by what he smells. Now, now, watch this. You know babies have a smell. So when you're a baby in the Lord, you carry a smell. God know that he can't give you wealth yet. He know that he can't give you the glory of God. He got to give you the anointing or he got to get, watch, God give you faith first. Huh? He give you faith first. Then afterwards, he give you the anointing when you can handle faith. Look at daughter said she received $500 for your birthday. This your birthday, huh? Happy birthday to you.
Now, saints, I'm going to show you something in the Bible. Wow. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 19, say. I mean, Leviticus chapter 1, verse 9. It says, The priest shall offer up in smoke of all of it on the altar for a burnt offering and an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. Saints, let me give you the clarification because some of y'all ain't understand what I said. Stop, stop acting like you know what it said. You don't know what you don't know what it just said just now. You 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 like no, amen amen. No no you don't know what no amen was. No you lost you. You know what that said, huh? This is saying that the priest offered up the seed. But it smelled as a soothing aroma unto the Lord. Your seed smells. So you affect God's mood. That's why when you sow, you feel so good. You ever experience the ecstasy of sowing? Especially when you fall in the Holy Ghost? You, you, why do you feel like that? Because that's God letting you know, hey, you made me feel good. Now I'm going to make you feel good. Do you know that wealth is God pleasuring you? Wealth is God giving you the sex of financial empowerment. Wealth is God letting you experience the high of the tree of life. Huh? Huh? The high of the tree of life. Wealth is God giving you satisfaction. Look what Proverbs chapter... Uh, Look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. It said, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. What, your, what God is going to cause to come forth is the tree of life. Every time you obey God, every time you do what Jesus wants you to do, you receive in the tree of life. Every time you obey the prophet. Because, saints, it's amazing to me that the Bible told us we obligated to obey two people. The Holy Ghost in the earth and the prophet assigned to us in the earth. Two people. <laughs> Jesus give you eternal life. The prophet give you abundant life manifestation. But let me shock you. The prophet and Jesus give you both. Because the rich man went to hell because he didn't receive his prophet, which was Lazarus. The children of Israel went to hell because they didn't receive their prophet, which was Moses. Achan went to hell because he didn't receive his prophet, which was Joshua. Think about that. Achan experienced not only him being burnt up, but his whole family being burnt up because he disobeyed Joshua. In the Bible. Now, Leviticus chapter 6, uh, 1 verse 9. Leviticus 2, 2. And then shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and shall take it from a handful of its flour and of its oil. And all of its frankincense and the priest shall offer it up in smoke as it is a memorial portion unto the Lord 
and an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. Saints, this is talking about the offering. You see what they did? They offered it up with frankincense. What you don't understand, when you sow, your offering is going up before God with frankincense. This is the same thing that the king sold into Jesus' life when he was born. Frankincense and myrrh. Why? Because they understood that the smell represented the presence of God. The smell represented the glory of God, the glory realm. It represented cherubims and seraphims in that atmosphere. And because Jesus was carrying the glory, they gave him the scent that was conducive to the glory so that when he smelt it, the angels would smell it too, and they would come on the scene. That's why Jesus was having a ceremony, even as a baby, because the frankincense that they saw, sold into his life was an angelic scent. When you smell good, your, your thoughts come alive in Jesus. When you take care of yourself, take care of yourself. You don't have to have a woman. You don't have to have a woman in your life for you to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Invest in making sure that you on point because it's going to affect you in the long run. Now, I'm not talking about vanity. Don't, you ain't got to look at yourself 50 times. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I'm looking at myself about 49, 49 and a half. You feel me? About 49 and a half and whatnot. You feel me? All right? You feel me? About 49 and a half. That's, that, ain't, that ain't against the law. All right? <laughs> I'm joking around. I'm joking around. <laughs> now, I'm joking around. But it's going to be very beneficial. <laughs> it's going to be very beneficial in your mental sanity. <laughs> Look at brothers. <laughs> maybe 30. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe about 30 times. Maybe, maybe about a good 29. Not about a good 29. Not about a good 29. You know? You know, you be up in there, up in there, you up there, somebody think that you texting on the phone. You be like, oh, who you texting? Who that on the phone? Now, that's me. <laughs> you ever met somebody like, hey, who, who that on the phone? That's me. <laughs> I'm joking around, Saints. I'm just joking around. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 2. <laughs> they said that they offered it up with frankincense. Now look, it got in this text, fine flour. And oil. I want you to catch this. Your seed got fine flour and oil in it. Oh, my God. There's all type of stuff coming to me right now. Your seed got fine flour. This is what you want to catch. Every time you sow, you got to remember that your seed got fine flour and oil in it. You, you know what fine flour is? Fine flour, which you can make that beautiful cake. You can make bread. You can make all type of delicacies that taste good. What it mean that your seed got everything in it that will cause you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Huh? Your seed got everything in it that you want to taste. And what's your taste? Your taste is your experience in this life. Your taste is what you're going to encounter in this life. Your seed got every God experience, every good experience that you want to have is in your seed. Every time you sow, you're investing in a pleasurable experience. You know, pleasurable is pleasurable. So, so, so your seed is able to pleasure you, but it's also releasing the ability of God for you to live in pleasure. See, see, saints, a lot of people don't know the, uh, the realm of Jesus of pleasure. Will he give you the ability to live in pleasure? That's what Job 36 verse 11 say. If you obey and serve him, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Somebody say, this is the day of prosperity. Say it. This is the day of prosperity. Huh? Say it. This is the day of prosperity. I decree today is the day of prosperity. What did the Bible say? You shall spend your days in prosperity. 
Saints, what I love about the word of God is it shut up critics. Critics can argue with you, but when you get to that word, it's over. God already gave you everything that pertains to life and godliness. The Bible say in 2nd uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, I believe, it said he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. The Lord done gave you all things. Your job is to unlock it. Don't worry about your, 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 your enemies. Focus on your inheritance. Huh? Let me give you a secret. The devil used Goliath for you to forget the land flowing with milk and honey. My God. The Bible said that Samson killed the young honey, uh, the, the, the young lion, and honey was in, inside the lion. You don't understand that demons are hiding your word from God. Stay with me on here. Stay with me on here. Demons are hiding your word from God. The Bible said that when Samson killed the young lion, that inside of the lion, there was honey. That means the word. Remember David said, thy word is like honey from a honeycomb? Because the word of God is the honey. The Bible said that bees started to try to get the honey that represent illegal spirits, thieving spirits that try to take your harvest and your inheritance. Huh? Those are evil spirits that try to enjoy what only belongs to you. Oh, my God. There's people that will pop up in your life that don't have a qualification to eat at your table with you. Huh? Somebody say, if, if, if you can't endure my cross, you can't enjoy my crown. <laughs> if you can't endure my cross, you can't enjoy my crown. Sometimes you, you see a lot of people on Facebook, they be like, come on, come on, prophesy to me, Papa. Impart the anointing to me, Papa. Just give it to me raw. You raw, give it to me spirits. <laughs> so one time I answered somebody, I don't usually answer them, but I answered them, I said, an impartation is not just going to come fully of what I'm carrying by me talking. You're going to have to be willing to say no to what I say no to, to avoid things in your focus, to avoid things in your path, Knowing what to respond to and knowing what to ignore. Knowing what to pursue and what knowing, knowing what to stop pursuing. Knowing what to engage, knowing what to disengage. You're going to have to have the soundness of wisdom. What is the, the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7 that he'll give you sound wisdom. That means that this is the wisdom where you hear the sound of the voice of God. See, some people have wisdom, but they don't know God. They don't, know his, they don't know him, but they got wisdom, meaning like they, 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 can be, they can be quick and hit you, bam, bam, bam. But sound wisdom is where I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that you'll hear my voice, but that's really Jesus speaking to you? I'm just giving some of y'all the secret. When you hear my voice, that's really Jesus speaking to you. Jesus will speak to you in the voice of that is imparting to you. So you'll hear Jesus talk to you and be like, huh? You'll hear him talking, huh? Huh? Jesus will have you looking at somebody in the line, look and say, look at them, they dusty. They dusty right there. They look at them right there, they're dusty. You remember the man on the little bicycle that tried to fight me, Officer Otis? <laughs> Officer orders and he came out there because he was hungry and looking for a sandwich. And, and saying, you remember, you remember when he pulled off in the bike? <laughs> he had a little perverted bike. Huh? <laughs> what was going on? What, what was going on? <laughs> like, brother, brother, don't get mad at me because your shorts. Who wears short shorts? Listen, you, you can't be looking like the UPS man in up there, you top flight security of the world, Craig. 
You get you got, what, you got the wrong uniform on, brother. You got you got a bipolar uniform on. You got you got the U, UPS, but you up there working for the security guard. Which one it was? Huh? Top flight. They ain't even got a gun on the side. I, well, if I try to rob you, what you gonna do? You gonna call backup? <laughs> Saints. I was in San Diego one time, and the police pulled me over. But what was funny? He was on a bicycle. So so you thought I stopped? I kept on going. What you gonna, what you gonna do? What you gonna chase me on a bike? Huh? You gonna chase me on a bike? <laughs> say, uh, say, say, what you gonna do? What you gonna you gonna speed fast? You can't you can't even run that fast if you was at twenty four hour fitness or, or or what they call it, LA Fitness. What you gonna pedal fast? <laughs> you gotta make the sound all by yourself. He up there speaking into, he up there speaking into his, his intercom. Real, 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 real. He making the sound himself. <laughs> he gotta make the. He, he don't got no alarm. He got real, 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 real. He up there flashing his iPhone light outside. <laughs> he got his iPhone light outside up there flashing it. I ain't got no iPhone lights up. If you ain't got a gun, we ain't got to worry about you. You feels me? I'm going to have me on Facebook. Somebody call Facebook up there. <laughs> Listen, let me just tell y'all something, and I'll just leave it alone. Please don't believe everything that you see on social media. Let me just say this to you. I know I'm going to mess up this world government, but it's okay. <laughs> Don't think for one minute. How could somebody be getting shot by a cop and somebody filming it? I'm just trying to give you some wisdom. Because, see, I'm a wise man. I'm a prophetic man. I know stuff that I don't always share. But don't really believe this media. Do you think, really think, that everything that happens publicly, how is someone filming and the guy is being judged for having a gun, but a woman is beside him holding up something that looks like a gun and the cop ain't shooting her too? And then you wonder why the cops don't go to jail. Saints, let me just say this. Lies are more frequent than truth. If somebody come tell you, listen, you know that she did this, don't just jump on it. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. Saints, don't be moved by all these deceivers in this world. This world is full of liars. Saints, how do you think that the World Trade Center, how did a building come all the way over? Get, they say it was hijacked. How? Don't we got TSA? That man was frisking me the other day. He would frisk me all over there. He was trying to hold me. Bro, get your hands off of me like this. Are you you just gonna hold it like this, man. What's wrong with you? This is female equipment, little female equipment. What's wrong with you, y'all? Beep, 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 beep. One time they took me in the back. I, every time I'm on my way to my meetings, they always take me to the back and say they got called a bomb squad. As the Lord lives, every meeting that I've gone to, when I get to the TSA, they take me to the back and say, we got to hold you for the bomb squad. And they do tests on my hands and they say that your hands got illegal liquid on them. I was on my way to Dubai, India. I almost missed my flight. They took me back there. I said, listen, sir, I only got a couple more minutes before I need to catch this flight. They said, we can't let you catch the flight because you got terrorism. 
inside of your hand. You got something inside of your hand that is terrorist. Is it, it release a terrorist alert? So the man came back and put all these swabs on my hand and was doing tests on my hand. And they said, you can't go on the plane like that. I said, sir, well, what am I going to do? You can't find it. <laughs> so, ah, that's the Holy Ghost. What? That's the Holy Ghost. And saints, this power is a power that the devil can't find it. He can't bind it. He can't blind it. He can't co-sign it. Oh. We roaring in here. We roaring in here. At the end of the day, you got a Jesus that got burden removing, yoke destroying, miracle working, salvation producing, blessing overtaking, grace abounding, abundant life giving, prosperity producing, wealth releasing, miracle working, Holy Ghost. You think that God can't get money to you? You think that God can't get health to you? You think that God can't get wealth to you? He is the God that rules over all, full of power, full of glory, full of anointing, full of wisdom, full of strategy, full of angels, full of Holy Ghost, full of power. He can't be stopped. He can't be stopped. He can't be stopped. No demon can stop him. When Jesus come in your life, no demon can stop you. You become like Jesus. You become anointed. You become glorified. You become full of power. And with the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you, you are the dynamite moving in this earth to blow up every single principality inside of your region. We are the original terrorists. We got bombs on our back. We got spiritual bombs, supernatural bombs, Holy Ghost bombs, glory bombs, Holy Spirit. We got bombs that they cannot detect. And when these bombs go off because revelation done popped off in your spirit, when these bombs go off because now you done became a submissive vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you became a sower into the gospel, you begin to be a prayer warrior and decree things. When you begin to move in revelation knowledge, these bombs go off. I was on my way to Atlanta. Two years ago when we was having that meeting, I think it was two years ago, almost two years ago, like an hour and a, a hour, like a year and some. When I got to TSA, they told me we got to take you and do an investigation on you because something is on you that's setting off our system. They did the little thing. They did it by my head. Then they did it by my body. Then they did it by my legs and my feet. And they said, we have to do a 30 minute process on you because it's all over you. They said, we can't tell you what it is now, but we're going to have the people assigned to the bomb squad unit to come in and they got to do a 30 minute process on you. Now, I'm on my way to Atlanta. I already had a supernatural occurrence where my flight was nearly about to be over. I knew, I knew that I had to get there a certain amount of time. Because a lot of people fly to Georgia for some reason in Texas and all these places. So I'm, I'm there. I make it. I just had an angelic visitation. An angel takes me in the vehicle. Supernaturally, when I get off the vehicle, I look back and the car that I drove in disappeared. Huh? I'm telling you, I was at DFW and when, the, when, the, when I got out the vehicle, I got out to wave back to the man. 
When I went go away back to the man, I saw the vehicle vanish in my face. And this is not the first time. It's, like the, it's a couple of times in my life I have seen vehicles. There's an angel. I forgot his name. He helps people out that get broken down on the road. And he has this truck. It's an old school looking truck. I've seen him in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in the city. I had to find my way back to uh, Conyers, I believe. Conyers, Georgia or Decatur, Georgia. And he took me all the way back. And when I got to the place where I was familiar with, I went go greet him and the, the vehicle disappeared in my face. At the time, my mother was with me. I said, mother, did you just see that? The man and the vehicle vanished in my face while I'm on the road. So you have to understand that angels have vehicles. That's what we deal with chariots. When your life begin to move, it's because you're moving in a supernatural chariot with an angel and they go at lightning fast speed. They don't slow down. They don't, they don't got no speed limit. They're just looking for somebody that can hold their wig down and, 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 get, and get it popping. Huh? You can do it, Brucey. Huh? Got to stay juicy and get it done, Brucey. Now, Every time I'm going to my meeting, if I'm flying, they'll stop me and say, you need to get an investigation on your hands. When I was on my way to India, they finally let me go because I had just two more minutes before I could board my flight. And that flight was a long flight. It was like 17, 18 hours. You imagine, saints, what begins to happen, what takes place in your life when you start to really be serious about submitting yourself to God and to your man of God. <clears throat> what begins to happen when you make a decision, hey, you ain't got no struggles. The struggle is, is that you don't know who to submit yourself to. You can submit yourself to an evil spirit. You can submit yourself to a demon spirit. You can submit yourself to a, 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 a enemy. When you submit yourself unto God and your man of God, there's no issues. That's the most happiest place you'll ever be in. If you want to study your life, study your life when you're going all over the place. You might feel excitement because sin will arouse you. Sin will make you feel all uh, like, uh, you know, it'll give you a false high. But if you study the weight of it, all of a sudden you back down low again. But when you with your man of God, there's a continual flow. A continual flow of glory. A continual flow of wisdom. A continual flow of life in life more abundantly. In your, see, see. This is what I want you to catch. Jesus is abundance. He is wealth. He is riches. He is. I am wealth. I am riches. I am that I am. God is everything that you believe in him for. He is mansions. This is what you, what you want to understand. Let me, let me give you a secret. You got your mansion inside of you. Let me give you a secret. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, that his seed remaineth in you. Do you understand that you got God's seed in you? That's the word of God. That's the spirit of God. Let me give you a secret. When you let that seed conceive in you, now you start sowing seed in the natural. Why? Because you let that seed grow inside of you and now... You, you got the revelation of the word and the God's ability and what he can do for you and everything that he got for you, your inheritance. Now you start flowing in it in your life. You start becoming a seed. You start sowing seed. Huh? And then watch. God make other people a seed for you. They start sowing into you. 
So then he trained other people to become a seed. And the cycle goes on and on and on and on. Every single house, car, divine uh, relationship, supernatural increase, health in your body, everything that you want is already in your spirit. Every time you obey God, you're releasing everything that you want into this natural realm for it to manifest. Every time you follow the Holy Ghost, you, you're releasing what, what, what God promised you into the natural realm for it to manifest. You already got it in your spirit, man. That's why, that's why God not into people up there trying to, ah, please, please. No, no, no. He's a rewarder they that did, diligently seek me. So when you release your obedience. When you, are re when you release your faith, your surrender, your submission, your seed, your worship, your honor. Saints, you know, worship wasn't singing. We've made worship singing. You know what worship is? Worship is submission. Worship is giving Jesus something that matters to you. Your child is worship. What, giving Jesus your child is worship. Why do you think that the Bible said that God asked for Ad, uh, Abraham, his son? Because that was worship. When he went, go give God his son, God sends an angel that show you that every time God asks you for something, there's an angel accompanying your seed. My God. That's why I'm giving you the revelation. The, the angel of God moves, the angel of God's presence begin to move every time you offer up something that God asked you for. When he offered up the little son, now the angel comes on the scene and speaks to him. Now he's in angelic communication. That's why I told you that your seed is the tongues of angels. My God. You see how all that come together? You see how all that come together? Your seed is the tongues of angels because the angel tongue wasn't loose to speak to him until he offered up his seed. Now, now, now since God gave me a powerful revelation, I know, I know some of y'all follow me on, some, uh, on, uh, on Periscope. The revelation God gave me was profound and it's... it's, it's, it's it's simple, but it's still profound. The simplicity. Now watch this here. The Bible said, your seed shall be mighty upon the earth. That's not just dealing with your children. That's dealing with your sowing. And then it said in verse 3, that wealth and riches shall be in your house. Saints, do you understand what that text means? That means that the anointing of might is upon your seed. My God. So, so every time you sow, you're releasing the might of God financially. You're releasing his might. So, so what is his might? When his might get built up, it produces riches. When his might get built up, it produces wealth and debt cancellation. And financial peace, prosperity, abundance. When you step into the realm of God's might, that's why the Bible says Psalm 112 verse 2, it said that his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. That's not just your children. Watch this here. Let me shock you. That's your sowing and your sowing protect your children. Your children can't protect your sowing. Your sowing protect your children. <laughs> That's why Joel was offering up seed. And he said, let me sow unless my children curse God in their heart. <laughs> your seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Look at verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. 
what you want to catch is that when we step into wealth and riches, it's because you done passed the test of worship. Because you can't worship God until you give him what's valuable to you. Your ch every time you give Jesus your children, you worship it. Every time you give Jesus your mind, because you, your mind is valuable to you. Even, even a fool, his mind is valuable to him. Because even a fool will tell you his foolishness. Huh? You ever met one of them crackheads? They always talking to you about Black History Month. Well, I was here when Al Sharpton was walking around here. And they just did us like this. And uh, they the reason why we're hungry today. Huh? They, are, they got still that slaves today. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> you ever see that man? You ever talk, look at you. Yeah, look at you. I ain't trying to look at you. I'm going to come broke like you, sir. Huh? Whatever you look at, you hook at. Huh? <laughs> Whatever you look at, you hook at. I ain't trying to look at you, sir. Huh? Excuse me, sir. Could you please let me go? <laughs> don't tell me where to go because you don't even know where to go. <laughs> so, don't, so don't tell me where to go. I'm just going to go. Can you tell me if I can go? Come on, tell you right, tell her, tell her, I done told you now, I done told you. I done told you now, I done told you now. I done told you. Now, say, what be crazy is people can live their whole life and never step into prosperity. You live your whole life and you didn't let the Lord Jesus Christ prosper you and it was his wish. How selfish of you. Because it was his wish to prosper you. Why did you withhold him from his pleasure? Listen, wealth not just for your enjoyment. Wealth is for God's enjoyment. God enjoyed to see you eating. Some of y'all, he wants you to be fat. You know, tell us, I need to lose weight. You're up there huffing and puffing in the gym. And the angel's laughing at you. Like, they they would have known what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted them to have that big old... Do you want them to have a big old chest? So you know they try to lose chest weight. I want them to have a big old chest. And some people try to lose neck weight. Now nah, God like to see that gobble gobble, shake it, shake it. Huh? Now nah, it's Thanksgiving coming up, huh? You better be careful. Somebody might cook you now. <laughs> nah, but sometimes God like that. God, God like that. Sometimes you up there telling us, I'm going to lose all this neck weight. <laughs> now your necklace fits you right the way the size of your neck is now. <laughs> you're going to have to get a, you're going to have to take off a link or two. If you lose neck weight. <laughs> now nah, you, now nah, so <laughs> Brother, don't we like so many sometimes that neck? Let, let me mind. Uh, <laughs> now, watch this here. Look at this here. <laughs> look, look at this. <laughs> no, watch, watch this here. Listen, you can't lose neck weight. <laughs> sometimes you need that le neck weight. Huh? Because your necklace, you're going to have to take some links out. Huh? And then your collar shirt is going to be dripping. It's it, 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 it not going to fit you right because that collar, you, you got the neck. They measured your neck. Huh? And when they measured your neck, you bought a shirt that fits your neck. If you lose neck weight, what, what you going to do with that shirt? Now you can't wear it. You're going to be mismatching. Huh? You take away your joy. Huh? Sometimes God wants you to keep that neck weight. I knew a preacher man... <laughs> He lost all these weight. He lost all this weight that he had knocked knees. And God told me, he said, son, he was supposed to be big. But he trying to lose weight because he looking at the camera, he looking at people on magazines, and he's saying, oh, I want to look like this. But he don't know that that's his significance. When he lost his weight, I couldn't even watch him no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was watching him real good. I was like, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dad, he done got skinny. His neck small. And, and now I can't watch you. Right, let me turn the channel. Turn the channel. I thought you used to watch him. Nah, I don't watch him no more. Turn the channel. I can't. I, this, I don't know who that was. 
I know him with the neck weight. I remember that. Listen, your look is your hook. Some of y'all be changing your look up. That's why ain't nobody staying in your life. <laughs> Cause one day you got the longest weave possible to go down to your knees. Huh? You almost tripped over it. Huh? <laughs> you was walking, you tripped right over it. Then the next day you completely Michael Jordan. Like, and you just be chilling like a mother. They be doing it. They be on Instagram like this, huh? Now, now your look, your look, your look is your hook. What I'm telling you is, listen, short hair is beautiful on a woman. I promise you. But let me give you a secret. If you gonna wear short hair, wear short hair. Like, don't fake us out. <laughs> don't fake us out. <laughs> Don't fake us out and have, 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 have short hair, and then the next day you you got that uh, black china. <laughs> Says so one time I was in a meeting in Florida, and this lady she said, "I keep on having visions of anacondas, prophet. What do you think it is?" And we was in a full blown meeting. It was people all over. We was in a full-blown meeting and people was all over. She said, I keep on seeing anacondas. What is it? She thought I was going to say something spiritual. I said, I said, you better stop watching Nicki Minaj. <laughs> God, God trying to tell you, stop, stop backsliding, watching Nicki Minaj video and whatnot. Huh? Everybody busted out laughing. They ain't <laughs> you see anacondas, you anaconda. That's what you, you, you watch Nicki Minaj too much. Huh? I done told you now. I done told you. I done told you now. I done told you. <laughs> I keep on seeing anacondas. Everywhere I go, I see anacondas. Yeah, you saw some anacondas because you were watching. You better turn on that BT. Huh? Black ticket not even on no more. <laughs> the basement not even on. Free and AJ gone. Now look at this. Let me get back to this. Let me get back to this word. Exodus chapter 35, verse 28. Exodus chapter... Uh, <laughs> make up your mind. The man... <laughs> this is just a little jokey joke. The man don't want... Just gone. Like, hey, hey, what? what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and everything, just, <laughs> and everything just stop. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> no, no. All right, let me get back. Don't judge me. These these were some sew ins. <laughs> well, they, they they sold out now. <laughs> oh, they, they, hey, they sold out now. <laughs> what, what, what did, are you sure? <laughs> I'm just joking around, saying. Now, saying this has never happened to me. <laughs> It has never, okay? It has never occurred, all right? All right, thank you. Oh. <laughs> 
Now, Exodus chapter 35, verse 28. And the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Let me show you something. I'm a, I'm a, I, I want to shock you with this scripture. This is so powerful. <laughs> Exodus 35, verse 28. Look at, what, look at what it say. It say, and the spice. Listen. Spice got a lot to do with your romance towards Jesus. Even your romance towards your man of God. Do you know that your attentiveness is the romantic side of you towards your divine king? Do you know that submission is your romance towards your divine leader? The spice is powerful. It's a realm where you stay spicy. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. But what happens when the Lord tastes you? Do he say, man, I need some salt? Nah, he shouldn't be asking for no salt because the Bible said that you are the salt of the earth. My God. So if he asking for salt after he tastes you, it tastes just like candy. Now, if, he, if he's still asking for salt, after he tastes you, that mean that you ain't spicy enough. You got to turn up in your relationship, your obedience, your surrender, your submission, your following of his instructions, your attentiveness, your consistency, your sowing, your honor. You got to turn it up. Look what it say. And the spice. Now I'm going to shock you with this text. I'm in Exodus chapter 35 verse 28. And the spice and the oil. The spice is what engages the oil. Because the oil can't even come until God sees that you on point in the realm of the spice. When you are spicy and you giving God what he wants and when he tastes you, he can taste what he's looking for in a person's character, in a person's uh, 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 obedience, in a person's ways, in a per your thoughts. I taste buds. God can taste your thoughts. That's why he told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled, because he knew that their heart was troubled. So he, he was tasting their heart. Jesus was tasting their heart. He was tasting their thoughts. So he said, let not your heart be troubled. Because what goes on is that your heart being troubled is a place where you're not spicy no more towards Jesus. Huh? You want your thoughts to be spicy full time. When you're a virtuous woman, that means that you are spicy towards God. He likes to taste you. When you are a, a consistent man, uh, an accomplishing man, you are spicy towards Jesus. When he tastes you, that, that's why if you see Jesus talk to a man a lot, that man is spicy. Jesus like him. Jesus enjoy being around him. Jesus like the receptivity. Jesus like the attentiveness, the obedience, the submission of that man. That man has the ability to arouse God into the realm of revelation, into the realm of glory, into the realm of demonstration. What's so powerful is when you become spicy, God begin to elevate you, take you to higher levels in the glory. He began to use you to reach places that nobody in your family has reached. You have divine privileges. He'll trust you with certain things. He'll say, hey, you can do this. Because you're spicy. Being spicy is God's pleasure. 
and being spicy is a man of God's pleasure. Because what happens is when you are spicy, you are not pulling back on the Holy Spirit. You're letting him be who he wants to be in you. You're letting him flow and function through you without you holding back. God don't need your resistance of him. I, I don't understand people. We see religious people all the time. God would say, say oh, I ain't going to do this. Well, shut the hell up. Get your broke stuff out of here then. We try and get the Holy Ghost up in here. You want you want to sit right there and tell him, son, you ain't going to do it. Well, get your broke self and go and serve Satan fully. Go, go and serve Satan fully. You ever seen somebody in your meeting, they don't, don't want to shout, they don't want to pray? Well, get your broke self up out of here. You don't want to celebrate the Holy Ghost. You don't want to do that with you a news reporter. Get your broke self out of here. Because they ain't spicy. They ain't spicy. You ever seen somebody say that they love God, but they're always mad. They're always angry. They're always agitated. always fussing. I done told you now. Don't, 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 don't pitch a G-string up here no more. I done told you now. Don't pitch a G-string up here no more. And you pitch a G-string up here again. If you pitch a D, G, your G-string, I'm a G, 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 G unit. I'm a karate side you. <laughs> why could they why could they not they're not spicy? Huh? Huh? <laughs> when people are not spicy spicy, they don't know how to treat you nicely. <laughs> When people are not, not spicy, <laughs> they don't know how to treat you nicely. <laughs> when people are not spicy, they don't get excited over God's revelation. You ever, you ever see how people react to God's revelation? Okay. Amen. Amen. Wait. <laughs> say, say. Huh? You say, wait. You say amen, and God just took the time to share something with you that was in his secrecy. You're the time to say amen. That's all you got to say. That's, that's the only word you can come up with for the creator of the universe coming down to talk to you. Saints, you know everybody don't go to the throne in heaven. You know that, right? Everybody don't got access to the throne. One time I asked Jesus, I said, Lord, I know there's people that didn't finish their assignment. But he said, why don't... I said, Lord, what's another reason why people don't go to the throne? He said, son, because... I don't like their receptivity of what I do and say. So I keep them at a distance. I know that they're going to be sour. I know that they don't, they don't got that type of reaction I'm looking for. So I keep them at a distance. I keep all my wild ones close. I keep the ones that's crazy for me close. I, I keep the ones that's, that worship me. They love to worship me. See, worship will give you divine favor. You, if you don't understand worship, worship will you celebrate divine presence i got it in my book worship is where you celebrate divine presence that can be even your presence the presence of your man of god if he carrying the presence and you don't know how to worship there's something wrong with you there's something wrong with you and, and, and people up there i why why when i get around dr mike murdoch i bow because i'm celebrating divine presence all this glory i walk in i still bow Because I understand how to celebrate divine presence. 
So you can't tell me now. You can't say, oh, you're the prophet Jaja. You don't want people bow to you. Listen, I bow myself. You think about that. So Jesus told me a lot of people, they don't got the reaction I'm looking for. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be in a place where you don't celebrate God the way that he's supposed to be celebrated. Heaven is a whole celebration of Jesus. Everybody is worshiping him. Huh? Everybody is giving him the due honor that belongs to him. It's worship. And see, saints, when you worship, there's a pleasure that you step into yourself. It's powerful. There's a pleasure that you step into yourself. It's a supernatural realm that you step into yourself. Watch this. Worship, it comes back to you. Because you still feel the supernatural. Of what that worship produced. Imagine that. When you worship, you start feeling the supernatural of what that worship produced. That's why if you're in the presence of God and you're spending time with him and you're doing something that makes him feel good, you'll start feeling too good yourself. Look at, look at Psalm 66, verse 12. Look where it says, you have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to a wealthy place, to rich fulfillment. Look at verse 13. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. See, saints, some people won't come before God with nothing. <laughs> if you come before God empty-handed, let me give you a secret. You're going to be empty-handed too. That's why we see a lot of people say, I love Jesus. We all, we all, we all God's children now. We all God's children. We all, I done told you now, I done told you. We all God's children. But, but they, don't got no, they don't got no sign of their being a God's child. Come like, if you... If you God's child, you okay with being struggled? Do th you don't understand what you're saying. If you are God's child, that means that you came from God and he don't got no issues. He don't got no strongholds. He don't got nothing riding over him, bothering him, taking him out of his Godship. So you just said that you came from him, you his child, but you got all them stuff operating. You okay with that? You don't want to change? Complacency is a sign of demonic possession. If you take a note, write that down. Stagnation is the fruit of witchcraft. Your pursuit for revelation will create your pursuit. Uh, uh, your, your productivity for acceleration. Your pursuit for revelation will produce your acceleration. Anger is God communicating to you something that you have to change. Anger is God communicating something to you that you have to change. 
Frustration is a sign that demonic presence is trying to defeat you. Frustration is a sign that demonic presence is trying to defeat you. Old temptations is the penalty for old focus. Old temptations is the penalty for old focus. The virtue of a woman is her ability to stay in the newness of life while the oldness is running after her. The virtue of a woman is to stay in the newness of life while the oldness is running after her. A man's dominion is in a man's submission. You won't go as far as you want to go in as a man until you realize an another, another anointed man that been sent to you. You won't go as far as you want to go as a man until you realize another man that been sent to you. Before you step into Elijah, you will have to be an Elisha. Before you step into Eli, you have to be Samuel. You have to be someone that doesn't know the voice of God in that realm yet. But someone else knows what you don't know. Let me, let me give you a secret. A fallen king still has hidden mysteries in him. A fallen king still has mystery, hidden mysteries in him because the fact that he was exalted to king at one time, God did give him an anointing. Remember, Saul had an anointed. Saul understood spiritual things. Remember, he went inside the company of the prophets prophesying. He understood the law of atmosphere. Huh? I feel the anointing. He understood the law of atmosphere. When he got in the atmosphere of the prophets, the prophetic fell on him. If you stand in my presence, you're going to receive what I'm wearing, the anointing that I'm wearing, the mantle I'm wearing, the angels that I'm carrying. Proximity to a man of God will make you an enemy to a man of Satan. Always remember that. Demons know where favor flow. Demons don't know the plan of God. They just, they just see the favor of God. They don't know the plan of God. Because God only reveals his secrets to those that fear him. And demons, they are not in the covenant. And he said he revealeth his covenant to them. He don't reveal his covenant to demons. Demons don't know the plan of God. They just know the favor of God. They just... Let me say it like this. Demons don't know the plan of God. They just see the hand of God. So they see when the hand of God is on you. That's how they know to attack you. They know if his hand comes upon you. When they see his hand on you, they know this is who I need to target. Attacks will reveal if you surrendered correctly. If you take a note, write that down. Attacks will reveal if you surrendered correctly. Attacks will reveal if you surrendered correctly. A lot of times, people haven't surrendered correctly. So when they get attacked, all the bad reactions come out of them because they didn't surrender correctly. Attacks reveal if you surrender correctly. If you pray for long enough, you'll always be strong enough. If you pray for long enough, you'll always be strong enough. You defeat flesh temptation by spirit revelation. Your decree will bring a demon to his knee. Demons and you are running. 
But your focus will decide if you are faster. De demons and you, if you ever inhale, them evil spirits down there can run at the speed of light. They fast. You imagine them evil spirits, they run at the speed of light. They fast. They fast. Because they, they once were angels of God. They still got those abilities. They fast. You can't, you can't get away from them. You apprehend it. Demons and you are running. But your focus decides who's faster. The Bible said that Elijah outran Ahab. That means that him and the demon was running, but he outran Ahab. Are you outrunning the demons that's racing with you? Do you know that warfare is demons running at your speed? Victory is when you take off and your speed get too fast for them. Your harvest is when you take off. That's why you got to sow your way out because demons still running at your financial speed with you. That's why you got financial issues. They running at the same speed. When you take off, you enter into wealth because they can't go there. When you get into riches, they can't go there. They can't go to the supernatural realm of finances because they don't got access. That's the secret place of God. So you can outrun a demon with seed, financially. You can outrun a demon with strength, prayerfully. You can outrun a demon with wisdom, mentally. You can outrun a demon with joy, emotionally. You can outrun a demon with health, supernatural health, physically. Ah, uh, this is this some stuff right here. But I'm going to say this and you'll catch this. This is powerful. I'm hearing Jesus say this to me. This is powerful. And some of y'all write this stuff down. This is powerful. I'm hearing Jesus say this to me. The Lord said that distraction is the tampon of the blood covenant. Wow. <laughs> wow Distract This is what Jesus just said to me He said distraction Is the tampon of the blood covenant He said Stops my blood from flowing In your finances It stops my blood From flowing In your decisions Your emotions, your ways Your character he said distraction is the tampon of the blood covenant. So the blood can't work the way it's supposed to work when you're distracted. When you become financially distracted, you become financially subtracted. You take a note, write that down. When you become financially attentive, you become financially expensive for the devil to mess with your finances. Think about that. When you become financially distracted, you become financially subtracted. When you become financially attentive, you become financially expensive. Seven-minute wisdom. 